Project Zomboid is a game that has a highly customizable difficulty level depending on the type of gameplay that you want to experience. If you want an extreme challenge for example, you can increase the zombie toughness and speed for a hardcore playthrough. If you want a role-playing experience, you can tailor the settings to fit into your ideal scenarios, such as the Walking Dead settings, where zombies are slow and weak, or Train to Busan settings, where zombies are fast and strong. All these options are available right from the start, and you will be able to mold the difficulty setting to your liking. The problem is, to most players, or at least those that don't bother learning the settings, it could be quite confusing. In this video, I will explain the different settings and what they affect, and I will also show you the best settings that provide a balanced gameplay between survival and a zombie slayer's wet dream. You can skip to 626 if you want to see the best settings directly or you can stick around to understand how the settings work so that you will be able to make your own personalized settings in the future. Now head on to advanced zombie options. By the way, the preset for these settings depend on the zombie count option that you choose in the population category over here. For example, if you set the zombie count to normal, it will be 1. But if you set the zombie count to low, it will be 0.35. The more you know. Moving on. First let's start with Population Multiplier. Population Multiplier is the overall amount of zombies that will be in the game. If you set it to 1, then there will be a normal amount of zombies. The specific number of how many zombies is unknown, but apparently 1 is the average. So for population multiplier, I will set it to 4, because I don't want the game to be a walk in the park. I want to massacre hordes and fight thousands of zombies. But don't worry, there won't be hordes as soon as you spawn. It won't be that difficult, at least not at the start. That is where the next setting comes into play. Population start multiplier. This setting is the zombie population at the start of the game. Let's set it to 0.1, because we want to have a head start before zombies fill the streets. The beginning of the game is going to be the preparation stage where you find as much loot as you can, before the zombie population starts to explode. As days go by, the zombie population will gradually increase until it reaches the peak population multiplier that you set. Which brings us to the next setting, which is Population Peak Multiplier. I will also set this to 4, because 4 is already a hell of a lot of zombies, and going any higher might crash your game due to the extreme load that Zomboid will bring upon your computer. Population Peak Multiplier is the number of zombies that will arrive on the peak day that you set. Which is the next setting you're going to change. Population Peak Day is the day that the maximum amount of zombies will spawn in the world. You can change the setting however you like, depending on when you want the biggest challenge to arrive, but for this video, I'm changing it to day 40. This gives us a generous amount of time to scavenge, loot, and train in preparation for the impending doom on day 40. Now for the zombie respawn settings. Turn it all to zero. Zombies respawning, sucks donkey ass. Anybody that plays with zombie respawns on, might be mentally incapacitated in some way. Imagine you've spent 4 hours clearing a base, and the houses surrounding it. And then you enter the bathroom to take a spooky dookie, and all of a sudden a zombie is nibbling on your jiggly willy. You should turn off zombie respawns if you value your sanity. Respawn hours, respawn unseen hours, and respawn multiplier should all be zero. Next is redistribute hours, I will leave that as is, because it doesn't really have much of an impact, because all it does is decide how many hours it's going to take before a zombie would move to a different location. You can mess around with that however you like, but for this video, it will be left as the default. Follow sound distance is also best left as is, because that is too complicated to get into, and not that important for this video. Now lastly, for the zombie rally settings. These settings are what keeps zombies clumped up like this. Now personally, for me, I hate the look of zombies being in clusters like this. Firstly, they're too difficult to fight if you run into one, and second, they just look so bleh. 
Random zombie clusters don't fit into the ideal image of what I want a zombie apocalypse to be like. I want zombies to be scattered and randomly placed, it feels more realistic that way. I mean sure, there can be a random zombie cluster of 5 to 10 I guess, but only because they just walked towards each other by chance, not because they actively try and group up like a pack of hyenas. So because of that, we will be changing these settings to the absolute minimum. Rally group size will be 0, rally travel distance will be 5, rally group separation will be 5, and rally group radius will be 1. That's it for the best zombie population settings. Here it is once again on screen so you can double check everything. If you skip to this part, then you have small pp. If you watched the whole video, you have extremely huge pp. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below any other videos you want me to make, and I will give you a shout out in the next video. Thanks for watching.